Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's been a long time. Welcome everybody who is new and welcome back those of you who are my first few subscribers. It's been a minute and I'll tell you why. The uh, COVID-19 virus really, really affected things for me up in Seattle. It is, I think, now considered a red zone, and they did have to shut down my school, University of Washington. I don't know if you've seen the news. Um, I'm not going to get into that because I feel like people are watching YouTube to kind of not look at reports on the coronavirus. So in that um, light, I just wanted to tell you this because it's why I'm a little late on my video, and it's why I am in front of a new background. I am actually down in LA now and will be here for uh, a few weeks. So um, with that said, I hope you guys are feeling positive and happy. Wash your hands and use soap. <laughs> I am very tired, just the whole um, going to LA kind of spontaneously um, all of a sudden plus the daylight savings has really done a number. So I'm going to start by taking my Herbivore um, Jade Roller and I'm just going to take it under the eyes and around to kind of just depuff this area. I'm actually gonna try to depuff everything. I love this because it stays really cold. For those of you who've never seen a jade roller in action, they're naturally very cold and they help with lymphatic drainage as well as um, boosting circulation to the face, which can help with anti-aging. Um, if I look washed out, it's because I am. <laughs> I am very pale at the moment, um, but fear not, we're going to solve that in just a second. So I'm going to pop on the skin serum on this side of my face, dotting it in no particular order. Now something to keep in mind with the serum. This would probably be best suited for someone who loves a radiance to their skin, dew to their skin, and who wants a product that's gonna play nice with your dry patches. If you have any dry patches, this is not going to uh, magnify them. In fact, it might actually help with them. It just has those ingredients that really help moisturize the skin. Um, this is for someone who wants something for every day. You want to slap a little SPF and serum and tint all in one. Then the Ilia is for you. I'd say that this would be suitable um, for really dry to combination skin types. I have a feeling based on how thick and like um, moisturizing this feels that if you're quite oily, um, this would probably feel kind of heavy on your skin, almost like, you know, when you're using a moisturizer that's just not right for you and it's too thick and you almost feel your skin sweating underneath it. I feel like it would be that vibe. Um, but, you know, if you're really dead set on this, then I would say get a sample if you're quite oily. But yeah, this is who I think it would be appropriate for. And as you can see, even though it's light coverage, Look at the difference it's made under my eyes specifically. It still helped cancel out that kind of darkness. So that's really, really great. Now let's jump in to the Kosa's Tinted Face Oil. This is a product that you really need to shake up before use. It doesn't have SPF in it. This is for somebody who wants to do their SPF separately. And this is for somebody who uh, doesn't have dry patches because although the Kosas Tinted Face Oil is beautiful, it does not play nice with dry patches. Also, it is extremely liquidy when you compare it to the Ilia. This is a serum that kind of drips. It's also a very different coverage. Although it's going to give you radiance, it's not super dewy. It will dry down to more of a radiance versus like a dew. And um, the coverage 
is more intense, you can amp this up to be a full medium and only a couple of drops will actually give you like a, a very light coverage. Um, a main difference in this uh, Ilia serum product versus the Kosas that you'll note is that I'm using a beauty blender because I find that I don't like spreading the oil with my fingers. I don't like feeling like my fingers are oily. Um, and I think that the Beauty Blender does a really good job of spreading it all over the skin. And weirdly, it does not absorb this product. I think probably because it is a tinted oil and so it's not really being absorbed. And I just wanna be transparent with you all because this on some days wears beautifully for me. But on other days when I do have dryness, it does cling. So I would like to now show you exactly where it's clung. I have a little dryness in this area. The ilia sits beautifully on top and the kosas unfortunately did cling to that area. This is the side with ilia and I have dryness here on my nose and cheek and it's sitting pretty well on top. Versus the kosas has clung to these areas and you can actually see it grip onto that patch. So that's a little transparency for you on that zoom in. Even though this looks really pretty from this distance, it is misbehaving with my dry patches. However, because this dries down more than the Ilia, um, I don't feel like the Ilia stays sticky forever. However, there is a longer dry down time and it does stay more emollient on the skin, whereas this does dry down and it is still radiant. So I do feel like more oily combination and normal skin types would love this. Even if you're dehydrated, you're going to love this. If you have dry areas on your face, you're not going to love this. Um, additionally, be very careful with what primers you pair it with. This plays really nice with like oils and oil-based products, but with a water-based primer, because it's an oil, it will pill. So I just wanted to give you that disclaimer. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the concealer. This is the Ilia Serum Skin Concealer on this side. And I'm just going to show you how it wears. This is a concealer that I've talked about already several times on my channel. And it is because it looks so beautiful on the skin and it really plays um, quite nicely with uh, dry areas. Really nice. And now I'm going to get into the demo of the Kosas Revealer Concealer. So what is the Kosas Revealer Concealer? Um, I got mine in the shade 3.5. It is their brand new concealer to Kosas, and it's the same kind of vibe, you guys. It is the skin care and makeup mesh. So the founder talks about this concealer, and she says that it is brightening, soothing, and plumping. So it has caffeine in it, which helps shrink the capillaries under, um, is that the, how you pronounce that? <clears throat> capillaries? I don't know. My mom's British, so don't at me. I'm British! Um, <laughs> I get some things confused, but it shrinks those areas, the blood vessels under your eye, to help minimize dark circles over time. It also contains hyaluronic acid and peptides for anti-aging and hydration. And it also contains Arnica, which Arnica is meant to soothe and also help fade dark spots on the face and breakouts, as well as pink algae, which has beta carotene in it, which helps with glowing, youthful, bright skin. So it has a lot of great ingredients in here, and I'm interested to see how the coverage is. It is supposed to be a medium to full coverage. So again, while this guy leans light to medium, this is medium to full. And um, it's supposed to be very dewy and long lasting on the skin. So let's pop this on and see how it wears. I'm actually gonna try to put it on top of this dry patch just to see if it fixes it in response to um, 
I guess, complaints about the tinted face oil from people with extra dry skin. The founder did say that the concealer is supposed to wear a lot better. And she even suggested mixing the two um, to create a dewier product. So let's see how it goes. I like the sound of something that um, works to kind of heal your dark spots because I definitely do have a significant, well, I don't have a significant amount. That's a lie. I was going to say mine take forever to heal. Um, even if I am using vitamin C and everything, they do tend to pop up through makeup. So it didn't really help the dry patch situation, but it didn't bother it. Um, it looks really pretty on my chin and it looks really nice under the eye. It's very plump looking, like it's very smooth looking. It's not creasing, it's maintaining that coverage and it's not um, emphasizing any dry areas. So I'm gonna zoom in and kind of show you exactly how it's wearing. So this is the side with the Ilia concealer and this is the side with the Kosas. And as you can see, they're looking both really good, but this one does have that coverage factor. Okay, you guys, this is the finished makeup look. I just threw some stuff on and this is how everything is wearing. Um, I have not powdered any part of my face because I don't love powder all the time, as we know, so I'm just doing me no primer, no powder. You're gonna figure out, we're gonna figure out how this wears, and I will check in with you in a few hours, and then I'm just gonna give you my conclusions on who this is for. All right, see you soon, bye. Hi guys, welcome back. I have been fiddling with this camera, God, for the last hour, just trying to get it to <laughs> look good. So, um, I don't know, a new background is sometimes difficult, but I am back and I'm here to check in with you. It has been approximately four hours since I last filmed. We're getting this beautiful goldenish light peeking through and I wanted to let you know how the products are wearing. So yeah, let's look at it together. I have not checked and I do not touch up my face as you know. So, okay, I have some thoughts. The Ilia side on the concealer has faded and it's a touch, a touch of a crease in there. Very subtle. Um, but the Kosa side has stayed completely put and it doesn't have any creasing even though I didn't set it, which I love. Um, the side of the Kosa's tinted face oil has really clung to this dry area. I fully think I did this to myself. I layered my Curology with a retinol, which is not a good idea. However, even if I hadn't done this to myself, it's important to understand that the Kosas does do this. So I will be showing you that um, as well in a close-up. Um, yeah, let's just do that now. Hello. Okay, so I'd like to show you one side versus the other. So. This is the Kosa side and this is the Ilia side. There's a little bit of creasing in here. I don't know if you can see. And here I feel like there's no creasing and it stayed. So it's picking up on those dry areas as it did previously. Oh, here, now we can see it. So this is the side of Kosas. And this is Ilia. So as you can see, Ilya is not doing that. And they're in the same area. So Kosas, Ilya. However, under eye, Ilya with a little creasing, Kosas. So what does that mean for you? I'd like to break this down a little bit. So for me and my skin type these days and how dry I have been, I am finding that my favorite products of the bunch are the Ilia Skin Tint and, in light of today, the Kosas Revealer Concealer. Because these two, I think, would make a really beautiful combination of dewy, skin-like, but your concealer would stay in place and kind of mattify the areas, mattify is a strong word, lessen the dew and add coverage in the areas that I would need to add coverage. And I really like that this did not crease. 
and I love how reflective this is. So these for me would be an ideal match. However, I do feel like I would never wear the Ilia skin tint if I was gonna go out to dinner because it is not really meant for that. It's not meant for like a date night or a night out with friends or clubbing. It is meant to be an easy skin tint that you just pop on if you are doing a light day. So for that reason, I would recommend this for an evening situation, especially because it doesn't have the SPF, which means it will not give you the flashback. Like I said, if you have an oilier skin type, you would probably enjoy Kosa's products both of these over both of these. If you have a lot of texture under your eye, I would recommend the Ilia concealer over the Kosas, just because I can already tell that even though this didn't add to the dry area, it certainly didn't help the dry area that I had on my face versus I feel like this always helps smooth over the dry patches. Not to say that this would cling to dry areas um, under the eyes because I didn't experience that. I felt like both sides were the same, but I just wanted to make a note of that for you. So I hope that's giving you some perspective on which of these would be best suited to you. I don't think you need everything. I don't think you need both unless you absolutely love clean products and you just want to collect them. Um, otherwise, I would recommend what I just said. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I hope that fills in any questions that you've had, but if you do have any, drop them down below and I will answer them as soon as I can. I am super excited to bring you my next few videos. They are gonna be so fun. I can't wait to show you what is in store. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great week. Wash your hands, you guys, and I am sending you my best wishes. Bye.